Section 47 of The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Purgatorio, Canto 13. Purgatory, the Second Ring. Envy. Instances of Generosity. The Envious. We now are at the summit of the stairs, where for the second time is cut away the mount, a scent of which frees one from sin. And there a cornice, like the first one, girds the hillside round about, save that its arc more quickly curves. There is no shaded carving apparent here, nor is there any mark. The bank seems bare, as also seems the path, with but the livid colour of the rock. If we wait folk here of whom to ask our way, the poet argued, I'm afraid our choice will be, perhaps, delayed too long then on the sun he fixed his steadfast eyes made of his right the centre for his motion and turned the left side of himself around o thou sweet light with confidence in whom i enter this new path conduct us thou he said as one should be conducted here thou warmst the world and on it thou dost shine if aught else urge not to the contrary thy rays at all times ought to be our guides already had we gone as far up there as here on earth is reckoned for a mile in little time because of ready will when flying toward us there were spirits heard who though unseen were to the board of love uttering their courteous calls the voice which first passed flying said aloud they have no wine and then behind us kept repeating it and ere because of having moved away it could be heard no more another passing cried i am orestes nor did that one linger what are these voices father said i then and even while i was asking lo a third which said love those from whom ye've ill received the kindly teacher then this circle whips the fold of envy hence the scourge's cords are drawn from love the curb will probably give forth a sound the contrary of this in my opinion i believe thou'lt hear it before the pass of pardon thou attain but keenly through the air address thy gaze and thou'lt see people on ahead of us who seated are and each against the cliff then wider than before i oped mine eyes i looked ahead and shades i saw with cloaks not differing from the colour of the stone and when a little further on we were i heard one crying mary pray for us and cries to michael peter and all the saints nor do i think there walks on earth to-day a man so hard that he would not be pierced by sympathy for what i then perceived for after i had drawn so near to them that what they did with clearness came to me tears from my eyes were drawn by bitter grief covered they seemed to me with coarse hair-cloth and one sustained the other with his shoulder while all of them were by the bank sustained even thus the blind in want of livelihood at pardons stand to beg for what they need and one upon the other bows his head that pity may be speedily aroused not merely by the sound of what they say but by their aspect which no less implores and as the sun availeth not the blind so to the shades whereof i spoke just now the sky's light willeth not to grant itself because an iron band runs through and sows the eyelids of them all as with wild hawks one does since otherwise they'd not keep still to me it seemed an outrage that unseen i should see others as i walked along i therefore turned to my wise counsellor he well knew what the dumb man wished to say and therefore waited not for me to ask but speak he said be brief and to the point virgil on that side of the corner sledge was coming on with me whence one can fall because it wreathes itself with no bank there on the other side i had those zealous shades who through the horrid seams were pressing so their tears that they were bathing both their cheeks turning to them i thus began o people who certain are of seeing that high light which your desire hath for its only object so melt grace soon the scum upon your conscience that memory's stream may through it clearly flow tell me for grateful will it be to me and pleasing if there is among you here a soul that latin is it will be well for him perhaps if i should come to know it o oh, brother mine we both are citizens of one true city but thou meanest one who while a pilgrim lived in italy it seemed to me that this i heard for answer a little further on than where i was i therefore let myself be heard much further 
among the rest i saw a shade which seemed expectant in its looks and if one ask how so held up its chin as do the blind spirit said i that dost subdue thyself that thou mayest climb if she that didst reply make thyself known to me by place or name cianese i was she answered and with these cleanse here my guilty life and pray to him with tears that he may lend himself to us though called sapia sapient was i not for i was far more glad of others harm than i of my good fortune ever was and that thou mayest not think that i deceive thee even as i tell thee hear how mad i was once my year's arch was on its downward course when with their foes my fellow-citizens were joined in battle near the town of Colle, I prayed to God for that which he had willed. When, routed there, they took the bitter path of flight, I felt on seeing them pursued a joy unequalled by all other joys. I therefore upward turned my daring face and cried to God, I fear thee now no more, as doth the blackbird at the least fair weather. When I was at the end of life, I longed for peace with God, but not yet would my debt have been diminished by repentance here, had it not been that Pietro Pedinaggio, who of his charity was grieved for me, was mindful of me in his holy prayers. But who art thou, that askest of our state while going on, and hast thine eyes unclosed, as I believe, and dost while breathing talk? mine eyes will yet be taken from me here but not for long said i for they have not offended much by being turned by envy far greater is the fear wherewith my soul is filled of that tormenting pain below for even now the load there weighs upon me and she who then led thee to us up here if to return below thou think and i he that is with me here and speaketh not but i am living Therefore ask of me, elected spirit, if thou'dst have me move my mortal feet in thy behalf on earth. Oh, this, she answered, is so strange to hear, that certainly it proves God's love for thee. Therefore assist me with thy prayers at times. I beg thee by what most thou longest for, if e'er thou tread the soil of Tuscany, that thou among my kin restore my fame. Among that vain folk wilt thou see them there which hopes in talamone and will waste more hope on it than on the diana quest but still more will the admirals invest end of purgatorio canto thirteen section forty eight of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain purgatorio canto fourteen Purgatory, the second ring, envy, Valdarno and Romagna, in thirteen hundred, instances of punished envy. Who is this spirit who around our mount is circling thus, ere death have given him flight, and at his will opens and veils his eyes? I know not who he is, but know he is not alone. Ask thou that nearer art to him, and greet him fairly, so that he may speak two spirits who were leaning on each other thus talked of me upon the right hand there then turned their faces up to speak to me and one said soul that still held in thy body toward heaven art going of thy charity console us now and tell us whence thou comest and who thou art for thou dost cause in us such wonder at the grace accorded thee as that demands which never was before and i a small stream winds through tuscany which up in falterona hath its rise and is not sated by a hundred miles from somewhere on its banks i bring this body vain would it be to tell you who i am because my name makes no great sound as yet if with my mind i rightly penetrate thy meaning that one then replied to me who spoke before thou talkest of the arno thereat the other spirit said to him why did this man conceal that river's name as people hide the name of dreadful things the shade who had been questioned as to this discharged its duty thus i do not know but meet it is that this vale's name should die for from its source where that wild mountain chain whence severed is pelorus swells so greatly that in few places doth it pass that mark to there where it betakes it to restore whatever from the sea the sky sucks up 
whence rivers get what goes along with them, virtue is snake-like as a foe pursued by all, or through the region's evil luck, or through bad customs which incite men there. Hence those that in this wretched valley dwell have changed their nature so that it would seem that Circe had them in her pasturage. Among foul hogs, of acorns worthier far than of all other food that's fit for man to use, it first directs its sorry path. As down it comes, it afterwards finds curves that snarl more fiercely than their strength comports, and turns from these its snout aside in scorn. It keeps on falling, and the more it swells, the more that cursed and unlucky ditch finds that the dogs are turning into wolves. Descending then through many a gloomy gorge, foxes it finds, so full of fraud, that naught have they to fear, lest cunning master them. <laughs> Nor shall I cease to speak, though overheard. And for this man twere well, if he were called hereafter what a truthful spirit shows me. Thy grandson I behold, who first becomes a hunter of those wolves upon the banks of that fierce stream, and terrifies them all. He sells their flesh while still alive, then kills them as an old beast he would. Of life depriving many, himself of honor he deprives. He issues bloody from the dismal wood, and leaves it such that in a thousand years twill not rewood itself as once it was. As at the announcement of some painful loss, the face of him who listens is disturbed from wheresoe'er the danger may assail him. Even thus did I behold that other soul who turned to listen grow distressed and sad as soon as he had gathered in that speech. The words of one soul and the other's face had caused me to desire to know their names. Therefore with prayers I mingled this request. That spirit, therefore, who addressed me first, began again. Thou dost have me condescend to do for thee what thou for me wilt not. But since God wills that so much of his grace should shine in thee, I'll not be niggardly. Guido del Duca know then that I am and so consumed by envy was my blood that had i seen a man becoming happy livid with envy thou hadst seen me turn of what i sowed i'm reaping now the straw a human race why set your heart on things wherein companionship must be forbidden <sighs> this is rinieri this the honour is and glory of the house of galbuli whose worth since him none hath inherited nor hath his blood alone despoiled itself between Po and mountains, Reno and the sea, of those good things which truth and joy require. For in those bounds, the country is so full of poison stocks that only slowly now would they be lessened, even if it were tilled. Where are good Lizio, Arrigo Mainardi, Pier Traversaro, and Guido di Carpinia? Who oh, Roman yoles turned into bastards now? When in Bologna will a Fabra rise? when in faenza a bernardine di fosco the noble scion of a little plant wonder not tuscan if i weep now when with guido da prata i recall to mind ugo lindazzo who among us dwells frederick tignoso and his company the traversara house the anastagi and both these families are void of heirs the ladies and the knights the toils and ease which love and courtesy once made us crave where hearts have grown so bad no pretinoro wherefore not vanish since thy family and many people with them have departed that guiltless they might be Fania caval begetting sons no longer doeth well but castracaro ill and conio worse which still takes trouble to beget such counts well the pagani too will fare when once their demon shall have gone but not so well that an unspotted fame will e'er remain to them o ugolin de fantoli thy name is safe since one can now no more be looked for who as a degenerate can darken it but go thy way now tuscan for weeping now affords me far more zest than speech our talk hath so distressed my mind we knew that those dear spirits heard us leaving and therefore merely by their keeping still they made us trust the path which we were taking when we advancing found ourselves alone a voice which seemed like lightning when it cleaves the air was heard and as it reached us there said whosoever findeth me shall slay me then vanished as when thunder rolls away if suddenly a cloud be rent apart soon as our hearing had a truce from this behold another with so great a crash it seemed to be its following thunderclap i am a cloudus 
who was turned to stone then to draw closer to the poet's side i took a backward not a forward step the air was calm on all sides now when he that was the painful bit which in his bounds should hold a man but ye take in the bait and so the ancient adversary's hook draweth you to him hands of small avail is either curb or lure heaven calleth you and showing to you its eternal beauties around you moves and yet your eyes look down hence he who seeth all things scourges you end of purgatorio canto fourteen section forty nine of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain purgatorio canto fifteen purgatory the second ring envy the angel of generosity the third ring anger instances of gentleness between the third hour's close and day's beginning as much as is apparent of the sphere which like a child is ever given to play so much now of its course toward evening seemed remaining to the sun twas vespers there and midnight here and fully on the face its rays were striking us because the mount had been so circled by us that we now were going on directly toward the west when far more blindingly than e'er before i felt my forehead overcome by splendour and was bewildered by these unknown things over my eyebrows hence i raised my hands and made myself the screen which filing off tempers excessive light in what is seen as when from water or a looking-glass a ray leaps up in the opposite direction and in the same way mounts that down it came and from the falling of a stone departs at equal distance to the same extent as both experiment and art reveal even so it seemed to me that i was smitten as by a light reflected there before me because of which my sight was swift to flee dear father what is that said i from which i cannot screen my face sufficiently to help me and which toward us seems to come wonder thou not he answered me if still heaven's family affect thy sight an angel is this who comes to ask us to ascend it soon will happen that to see such things will be no burden but as great a joy as nature hath enabled thee to feel as soon as we had reached the blessed angel with joyful voice he said enter from hence a stairway far less steep than were the rest we were ascending having thence departed when was sung behind us and my teacher then and i we two alone were going up and as we went i thought of how i might get profit from his words whereat i turned toward him and asked what meant that spirit from romagna when he mentioned forbidden and companionship in things hence he of his worst fold he knows the harm hence let it not surprise if he therefore rebuke men that it be lamented less because your wishes aim at that wherein each share is lessened through companionship envy fain moves the bellows for your sighs if love though for the highest sphere of all were upward turning your desires that fear would not be in your breast because the more there are up yonder by whom ours is said so much more good doth each of them possess and so much more love in that cloister burns i fast much more from being satisfied said i than had i silent been at first and more of doubt i gather in my mind how can it be then that a good that shared should make more owners richer with itself than if by but a few it be possessed and he to me because thou fastened thy mind exclusively on earthly things thou drawest darkness out of every light that good ineffable and infinite which dwells up yonder runs as fast to love as to bright bodies comes a ray of light so much it gives itself as is the warmth it findeth hence as is the extent of love so much the eternal worth spreads over it 
the more there are up there that love each other the more there are to love and more the love and mirror-like the more of love each sheds on each and if my talk sate not thy hunger thou shalt see beatrice and she will fully free thee from this and every other want do thou then see to it that speedily thou have removed as two already are the five wounds which are closed by causing pain wishing to say thou satisfiest me i saw that i had reached the following ring my fond eyes therefore caused me to keep still there it appeared to me that i was wrapped in an ecstatic vision all at once and that within a temple i perceived much people and a lady at the door who with the sweet mien of a mother said wherefore my son hast thou thus dealt with us behold thy father and i have sought for thee in sorrow here when she had ceased to speak that disappeared which had before appeared then there appeared another o'er whose cheeks those tears were streaming down which grief distils when born of great resentment toward another saying if thou art master of the city about whose name there was among the gods such strife and whence all knowledge sparkles forth avenge thyself on those audacious arms pisistratus which dared embrace our daughter kindly and gently then that lord appeared to answer her with looks of self-control what shall we do to him who hateth us if he who loves us is by us condemned then folk i saw inflamed by anger's fire who bent on killing a young man with stones cried to each other naught but kill him kill, kill. and him i saw bowed to the ground in death which now oppressed him of his eyes he e'er made gates of heaven and in that anguish prayed the lord on high with looks which unlock pity that he his persecutors would forgive when once my mind returned outside again to those things which outside of it are true i recognized my not untruthful errors my leader who could see that i was acting like one who frees himself from slumber said what aileth thee that thou canst not stand up but hast been coming more than half a league veiling thine eyes and reeling with thy legs like one overcome by either wine or sleep o oh, my dear father if thou listen to me i'll tell thee what it was appeared to me said i when i was thus deprived of legs and he if on thy face a hundred masks thou hadst thy thoughts would not be hid from me however small they were what thou hast seen was lest thou free thyself from opening up thy heart unto those waters of thy peace which from the eternal fountain are diffused i did not ask what ails thee as would one who looks but with the eye which seeth not when once the body lies inanimate but asked it to endow thy feet with strength so must the indolent be spurred when slow to use their waking time when it returns on through the vesper hours we went along forward intent as far as e'er our eyes could reach against the late and shining rays when lo a smoke in our direction came little by little and as dark as night nor was there any place of shelter from it this of pure air deprived us and our eyes End of Purgatorio, Canto 15.